Eureka! In our previous video, we discussed the various types of paraproteins, including heavy chain paraproteins and light chain paraproteins. We discussed that an abnormally large number of paraproteins with an identical appearance is called an M protein. They are produced by an abnormal clone of plasma cells. In this video, we discussed the various types of plasma cell disorders. Plasma cell disorders include myelomas, plasmacytomas, plasma cell leukemias, AL light chain amyloidosis, heavy chain disease, and rarer diseases like Castleman's disease and Cohen's syndrome. In this video, we are going to take a closer look at the different types of myeloma. Let's start off with MGUS. MGUS is defined by the following criteria. First, less than 3 grams per deciliter of M proteins. Next, less than 10% of plasma cells in the bone marrow. And third, no features of end organ damage, that is, no evidence of hypercalcemia, renal impairment, anemia, or bone lesions. MGUS on its own is benign. The significance of the large amounts of paraproteins is not known. However, MGUS can progress into something more sinister. The rate of progression of MGUS into a malignant condition occurs at varying rates depending on the type of paraprotein produced. IgM MGUS has the highest rate of progression, at a rate of 1% per year, into Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia and rarely IgM myeloma. Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia is a type of blood cancer resulting in the excessive production of a very large number of the very large IgM molecule. These large IgM molecules increase the viscosity of blood and have the propensity to cause thrombotic events. Non-IgM MGUS progresses at the rate of 0.5% a year into multiple myeloma and plasmacytomas. Light-chain MGUS progresses at the rate of 0.3% a year into light-chain multiple myeloma and AL light chain amyloidosis. A low risk MGUS is characterized by M protein levels of less than 1.5 grams per deciliter, an IgG isotype, and a normal free light chain ratio. The free light chain ratio is calculated by taking a ratio of the amount of Kupfer subtype proteins over the amount of Lambda subtype proteins in the blood. If this ratio falls between 0.26 to 1.65, the risk of progression of MGUS is considered to be low. Now let's take a look at smoldering myeloma. Smoldering myeloma is characterized by the production of more than 3 grams per deciliter of M proteins, which is a larger amount of M proteins than MGUS. More plasma cell infiltration in the bone marrow than MGUS, in this case more than 10% of plasma cells in the bone marrow, and no features of end organ damage. That is, no hypercalcemia, no renal impairment, no anemia, and no bony lesions. Smoldering myeloma can progress into AL amyloidosis or multiple myeloma over a period of five years. Multiple myeloma is characterized by the production of more than 3 grams per deciliter of M proteins, more than 10% of plasma cells in the bone marrow, and evidence of end organ damage. In non-secretory myeloma, as the name suggests, M proteins are not produced, but there is more than 10% of plasma cell infiltration in the bone marrow and features of end organ damage. In order to make the diagnosis of multiple myeloma, bloods are sent paying special attention to calcium levels, creatinine levels, and hemoglobin levels to look for evidence of end organ damage. Serum and urine electrophoresis, serum light chain determination, and immunoglobulin quantification is sent to characterize for the type and amount of M proteins. Skeletal survey and MRI of the lumbar spine may be done to look for the presence and the extent of bony lesions. A bone marrow aspirate may be done to quantify the amount of plasma cell infiltration into the bone marrow. For the purposes of prognostication, the LDH level, the beta-2 microglobulin level, and the albumin level may be sent as well. Thank you for watching! Check out Eureka for more videos such as these and don't forget to like and subscribe!